One of the biggest challenges we face when doing parameterized reporting is how to make plots consistent across multiple reports. We've learned, oftentimes the hard way, many tricks for dealing with this problem. Today, I want to show you one example that shows how we set consistent axis limits on our plots. Let's dive in. The example plots I'm going to show today come from a report called Oregon by the Numbers. It's a report that I've worked on for many years. The first county I'm showing you is called Jackson County, a county in Southern Oregon. I've chosen it because its median household income is sort of in the middle of all counties in Oregon. Now let's flip over to Harney County. You can see that Harney County's household income is a lot lower. But when we make this flip from Jackson County to Harney County, you can see the size of the Oregon bar stays the same. You might not think that's a big deal, but as I'm going to show you, by default, when you make multiple plots, that actually won't happen. And we'll talk about how to deal with that. Next, let's look at Washington County. You can see that Washington County has a very high median household income. In fact, it's the highest of any county in Oregon. And you can see that it goes well beyond the Oregon bar. But again, the size of that Oregon bar stays consistent. To get started importing my data, I'll first load the tidyverse package, which I'll use for general data wrangling as well as plotting. Next, I'll read in a CSV with the data that I need, and I'll save it as median income. If I take a look at this object, you can see that it's got geography. So it's got both Oregon, which we'll need because our plot's going to show Oregon as a whole, and then also all of Oregon's 36 counties. You can see if I scroll down there. We've also got amount, which is the amount of the median income in each county, as well as amount formatted, which shows a nicely formatted version of amount that we'll use when plotting. Next, we're going to create a median income plot function, which will take one argument, the county, and use that to make a plot. So you can see on lines 20 through 22, we're starting with our median income object. Then we're filtering so that the geography is in, or in other words, one of the county or Oregon. Next, on line 22, I'm using the FCT function on the geography column which will ensure that Oregon will show up below the county on each of our plots. Next, I am piping my data into ggplot. I'm using geomcall to make a bar chart. I'm using geomtext here to add annotations. So lines 32 through 36 are going to add the annotations for the amount of the median income. Whereas lines 37 through 45 are going to put the text for the name of the county as well as Oregon on those bars. Finally, we are using scale fill manual to set our values as gray and dark green. So Oregon will be gray, the county will be dark green. And then finally, we're using theme void in order to remove all elements because as you can see, our plot is quite basic. Okay, I'm going to run my function, and then here I have some sample code that's going to enable me to make some sample plots. So, for example, on line 53, median income plot for Jackson County, if I run that, you can see I've got a plot for Jackson County. I'm going to do the same thing for Harney County, and everything stays very consistent. However, with the Washington County plot, see how the size of the bar for Oregon got smaller? That's because the x-axis limits are set to the maximum of any value. And because Washington County has a higher median household income than Oregon as a whole, the axis limits actually get larger on that plot. They go wide enough on the x-axis to include all the data, which goes up to like $92,000. I don't want my plots to be inconsistent from one county to the next. So I need to write some code to make the x-axis limits consistent across all plots. To fix this problem, what I need to do is calculate the maximum median household income in any single county in Oregon, and then use this value to set my x-axis limits for all plots. To do this, let me calculate a value called max median income. I'll start out by using the median income data frame. Then I'll use the slice max function, I'll say order by equals amount. In other words, use the amount variable and n equals one. In other words, return one row. That will give me one row. Then I'm gonna use pull amount. So in other words, return the amount value. 
When I run this, I get max median income as a single value. When I look at the value down below, I can see that it's 92,025, which you might realize is the value of Washington County, which is the richest county in Oregon. Next, what I'm gonna do, you can see on line 79 through 81, is I'm gonna add some code for scale X continuous. Now I'm just showing you this code here. You can't actually run this on its own, but I'll show you how I add this to my function in just a minute. So I'm saying scale X continuous limits equals C zero comma max median income. In other words, we'll set the limits of our X axis to go from zero to the max median income value, which as a reminder is the max median income for any single county across Oregon. So now you can see I've created a new function called median income plot V2. At the top on lines 85 through 91, you can see where I'm calculating that max median income value. Then if I scroll down, this is all the same until we get to the very bottom. Look on lines 124 through 126, and you can see that I've added scale X continuous has those limits from zero to max median income. Okay, so now I have my median income plot V2 function, and I'm gonna run it for Jackson County. You can see it looks good. For Harney County, it looks good as well. And let me run it for Washington. It also looks good. Notice how the Oregon bar actually stayed the exact same size throughout. In fact, if I go back up to Jackson here, see how Oregon doesn't actually go all the way across to the end? The reason why is because we have set our limits to go all the way to that 92,000. In fact, if I comment out the line with theme void and run this again so we can actually see the limits, you can see that it's going, well, beyond 75,000. It's going up to, you know, about 90 something thousand. And you can see there that it fits. But if I uncomment this and run this again, you can see there's just empty space, which is actually what we want, because again, we want to keep our axis limits consistent across all plots.